Hello, my friends. I plan to start today's video with the words um, Finally, the front line has stabilized somewhat and the occupiers have reduced activity after successes around Avdivka. And overall, today is just good news. But looking at the map and getting fresh information, I realized that the situation on the front line has become even more tense than it was. And let's start right away with the Avdiivka direction. Here, the occupiers conducted 18 attacks in a day. And now, after capturing three villages around Avdiivka, they are trying to storm Berdichi, Orlivka, and Tonenka. They didn't achieve significant results in a day, but the intensity of offensive actions is very high and Shalin continues. So the Ukrainian armed forces described the situation from the ground as follows. After the capture of Stepov, the Russians are throwing meat at Berdikai, they want to capture the settlement from the east. Over the past day, we destroyed five armored personnel carriers moving from Stepov. The Russians are already trying to sneak into the southern outskirts of Berdichev, where we receive them. They are preparing for a massive assault on Orlivka, there are already a lot of Russians on the outskirts, ready for assaults. There is a continuous mortar and artillery preparation of various calibers. Reserves are collected through Avdiivka Kok. On the positive side, they cry on the radio that the Ukrapov has a good electronic warfare system, it is very difficult to work with drones. The battles for Peromaiske are also ongoing. Here, the occupiers are actively shelling the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces in the village and then conducting offensive actions. And the 110th separate mechanized brigade made a statement that they are finally going on vacation. We go out on vacation. We go out with our heads held high. After two years of confrontation, there is finally a rotation. We will gain strength to beat the enemy again. To the units that replaced us, we wish you endurance and destroy the orcs as much as possible. In the direction of Marinka, the situation is complex because the occupiers are managing to break through to Krasnohorivka. So there is also a huge amount of shell in there. And in the area of the village of Pabeda, it seems that the Russians have achieved success again. So they are already breaking through further into the fields. So far, the Ukrainian armed forces seem to be holding them back, but the battles continue. Additionally, the occupies a storm in Novomikhailivka with a large number of groupings from two sides and also shelling the settlement. So the occupiers have conducted 15 attacks already, but there have been no changes along the front line in the past days. In the Vuhlidar direction, there is significant activity today. So the occupiers have already conducted four assaults in the Vuhlidar area and Urashaina. And simultaneously, with several groupings, they are attempting to break through to Staromayorsk. But that's not all. Another attempt to break through to Malinivka has been recorded. Moreover, there is a significant amount of shelling along the entire front line. So this clearly uh, demonstrates the Russians' strong desire to break through the defense in this direction and advance further. And it seems they have plenty of reserves for these actions as the number of attacks is increasing. In the Zaporizhia direction, the number of shelling in the frontline villages has increased. There are attacks on Robotina from both sides. So six attacks 
have already been conducted within a day, but the battles continue. The situation is difficult, but the Ukrainian armed forces are doing everything possible to halt the defense. The Russians confirm that they haven't achieved any success. Our forces of the 136th Motorized Rifle Brigade, the 70th, 71st Motorized Rifle Regiment, the 104th Airborne Assault Regiment of the 76th Airborne Assault Regiment are storming the village of Rabatino, continuing to hold the stronghold on the southern outskirts of the village of Rabatino. The assaults are supported by armored vehicles, artillery and aviation, which uses fabs with UMPK. Despite all this, we have not yet made significant progress. In general, the situation in the Dnipro main branch remains tense. In the direction of Kherson, the occupants continue to intensively shout the entire right bank. Periodically, they attempt assaults on the village of Krinke, but all their efforts have been unsuccessful. The Ukrainian armed forces are holding their defense, destroying the Russians. Russian war correspondents, on the other hand, reported that they are not conducting any major assaults at all. Today, according to Teplinsky's Newspeak, the village of Krynky has not been cleared, it is the second day. In general, everything is unchanged. The enemy continues to hold a bridgehead in the village of Krynky. They can't knock him out of there and it is unlikely to succeed before the presidential elections in Russia. It's interesting to see if the situation will change somehow after Putin's elections, so specifically Putin, because Russians don't recognize any other candidates and claim that only thanks to Putin, Russia is not falling apart. They are so interested in перед своими новыми, назовем их, работодателями, он же ведь знает прекрасно, к чему приведет тот сепаратизм, к которому он призывает. К огромному количеству гражданских войн в разных точках нашего царства-государства. Как это уже было, из чего мы еле-еле выползли. И выползли только благодаря тому, что к власти пришел Путин. И больше не благодаря чему. Потому что сепаратистские настроения, сепаратистские тенденции и сепаратистские активности в нашей стране были на таком подъеме, что казалось, что этот вектор уже нельзя повернуть в другую сторону. In the Bakhmut direction, the situation remains very difficult. Today, besides the offensive actions in the Ivanovsky area, the occupants have increased the number of attacks on Klishivka and Andreevka attempting to regain the lost territory during the Ukrainian armed forces counteroffensive. So over the past day, the front line remains unchanged, but Ivanovsky is under significant threat. The occupants continue to storm the village and the Ukrainian armed forces describe the situation as follows. It is so difficult in Ivanovsk that there are no details yet. Overall, there remains hope that the Ukrainian armed forces will manage to hold their ground. And of course, today it's urgent to assist in purchasing drones. So this is the only thing that can save lives today. Similarly, the Russians are actively targeting Konstantinivka, Drushkivka and Kramatorsk, particularly on a daily basis. In the severe direction, shelling continues, but here the activity of offensive actions has decreased for today. Today, the situation can be described as stable. However, in the criminal direction, the occupants continue to actively storm the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces near the village of Terny and shell along the entire front line. Despite this, as before, they don't achieve any success and the front line remains unchanged. In the Svatova area, everything remains stable, while in the Kupinsk direction, battles continue for Tabaivka and Sinkivka. There is 
significant activity here, 11 attacks within a day. However, this doesn't lead to success for the Russians and the front line remains unchanged. And that's all from me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.